Hey guys, Taria here from Taria Sketchy Adventures and UrbanSketchingWorld.com. In this video, I just wanted to show you a simple ink and watercolor house portrait. I'm just using my Hannah Muller A5 watercolor sketchbook for this, and I just think practicing or drawing houses front on like this is just a really a. I think they just look really cool and they can look really quirky, but it's just a really nice way to practice your skills because the house is front on you get some nice kind of simple geometric shapes and it's just a really good subject matter to start off with and your results can just look really fun and really cool. So you can actually fill an entire sketchbook with these kinds of house portraits if you want I think that would make a really nice project and of course you can use our old friend Pinterest to find awesome photos and if you want a jump start on that, you can go and check out my sketching reference board, which is linked in the description below, and you'll find some interesting things there that you can have a go at. I'll also link to this photo that I'm using here, which again I found on Pinterest. I'll link it in the description below. So what I'm doing here is just sketching out the simple geometric shapes in pencil, and I urge you to do this. Just sketch out the basic shapes, and then move on to your pen because you don't want to go through and draw all of this in pencil and then draw over the top in ink. That is the mistake I used to make and by the time I'd drawn it all out in pencil the thought of going over it all again in ink and then having a go at myself when my ink lines weren't correct it was just arduous and I was like this actually isn't fun until I realized that's not the best way to approach it and actually the best way to approach it is Sure, get your pencil lines down, the big shapes down, make sure everything fits on the page. This is where you can use an eraser if you haven't quite got the building and the roof, the right proportions, etc, etc, etc. So do that and just draw in the big rectangular shapes, maybe mark out where the windows go, that kind of thing. Then put that pencil down and then grab your fine liner, your waterproof fine liner, your fountain pen filled with waterproof ink, whatever it is, pick that up and then go through and add in all the details and stuff. And don't beat yourself up if your line goes a bit crooked or if it's got a little wobble in it. Those kind of things actually, A, don't stand out to people at all and B, can actually make the sketch look much quirkier and more full of character. So yeah, really don't obsess over getting perfect lines and that kind of thing. I think it just kills all of the uniqueness that you bring to a sketch. But by all means, if that's your vibe, if you're really into like straight lines and like getting everything perfect, then sure, go for it. But I'm just saying, you know, you don't need to be that way. So here I'm just using a uni pin fine liner and I'm just going through, I think I started in the top left corner. I'm right handed so I find even though fine liners dry very quickly you're not really at much risk of smudging the ink. If you're using a fountain pen sometimes the ink takes a little longer to dry so you might smudge it. So I always like to work top left corner downwards to the right. I don't always get that correct because I just jump around and draw what I want to draw but that's generally my process. And because I've got my big shapes in and I've got my reference points like where the windows are and stuff like that, I can just go. I can just go with my pen and I can just add in lines where I see them. And you know, some architectural details look quite complicated to draw, but just draw a simple version of them and you'll be surprised at how effective that looks. So I think these kind of sketches are super cute. They're really cool. They're a really fun way to practice. But also there's a big market for house portraits. People there really want their house drawn. I've done a ton of commissions drawing house portraits. You know, if you get really good at this, you could uh, advertise your services on, on somewhere like Etsy or Fiverr. I've had lots of customers from there. You could also sell your sell prints of your work as well. This is if you're into that kind of thing, if you want to do that sort of thing. Also, there is a huge market in drawing wedding venues as well. Again, most of my commissions have been for drawing people's wedding venues, whether that's a pub or, you know, a church or something like that. So, you know, if you want to get into making a bit of side money with your sketching, then this is a really cool way to do that. Also, it's really rewarding, like hearing how excited people are to uh, receive your work. And sometimes it's the, the bride giving it to the groom, the groom giving it to the bride, or maybe it's a friend giving it to the wedding couple. 
And it's always just such a beautiful gift and people just love, love, love it. And then I find that they'll come back to me and ask them to draw something for someone's birthday or whatever. And I'm quite clear with people. I just prefer to do buildings. You know, people have asked me about drawing family members or pets or that kind of thing. That's not really my field of interest. I really like buildings. So I just make that, you know, clear to people. And that's cool. But um, yeah, if this is something you want to maybe make a little side business or whatever or you just really enjoy the thought of people having your artwork as a gift then this is really cool to do so yeah the sky's the limit or you could just make a fun series you could post it on instagram each each time you do one of these you can have a sketchbook full of house portraits it's just a really really fun thing to do so anyway i am getting to the end of the ink lines here And you'll notice, you know, my arches aren't perfect and my lines aren't perfect. But generally speaking, the house is in a reasonable proportion, like the roof versus the actual building. The doors and the windows are kind of the right size. And that's the thing you want to focus on rather than whether your lines are straight or whatever, because that will make whatever whatever else you do, that will just make a convincing sketch if your your roof and your building, for example, are in proportion. So now I'm just going around and adding in some details. Again, this is something that can really add a bit of magic to your sketch, drawing in those roof tiles or whatever. You'll notice I don't go through and draw every brick on the house, but I just add touches of details where I feel like they should go. There's no right or wrong answer to that. And, you know, the human eye fills in the rest. So don't worry about having to draw every brick. Some people do. I see some artists draw in every brick. Sometimes they'll use a thin, flat paintbrush, watercolour paintbrush, and just paint in the bricks. I also have done it sometimes. It just depends on the kind of feeling of the of the picture, really. There's no kind of right or wrong answer to that. But just don't get it in your head that you have to draw every brick, because you don't. And also, my roof tiles are a pattern that I kind of felt described the roof. It's not exactly realistic to the photograph. So you see how I'm just adding in bricks in certain areas just to just to describe the fact that that entire wall is made of bricks. So I feel like doing a bit on a left side of the wall and a bit on the right side of the wall at slightly different stages. That's that's pretty much all you need to do. So here I am moving on to the watercolor stage. I've finished my inking and I'm just going to put in like a bit of a moody bluey gray sky. I don't want it to be too bright and cheerful because I like the uh, feeling of the photograph where it's a bit snowy and it's a bit of a gray day. And then I'm coming in quickly and doing the foliage in the background because sometimes I really like how the the background trees can kind of seep into the sky. That can be a really fun look because it kind of gives that feeling like the background's blurred a bit and you make the house nice and sharp. It's kind of like a fun effect so you can do. So now I am painting in the walls with kind of a, I'm using English red and I'm just dipping in a bit of um, brown. I'm not sure which brown it is to be honest with you, but um, I'm just dipping in a bit wet and wet again, just to give the wall a bit of color variation. You don't want it to be all a solid color because that's actually, that's not how it looks. And that's, that will make your sketch look really flat. So it's always really cool to like vary your your colors you know and if you have to just work kind of quickly just dab in different colors and it can make it look really dynamic and interesting so i did the foreground hedge there too just using a bit of indian yellow and green and my white knights watercolor set same sort of thing just wet and wet just to give the hedge a bit of color variation and i'm doing the same on the ground as well just a bit of quinagdracone rose and Payne's Grey, those are my favourite colours for doing an interesting ground colour and just sort of s- splashing them together on the on the ground there and it, it just makes it look really fun. And now I'm just painting in the roof. I'm using my Escoda travel brush, Escoda Reserva. I think that might be a size 6 or it might be the size 10 version actually, I'm not sure. I do try and use a bigger brush to start with because again it gives everything a bit of a looser feel. Again, that's my preference, like you can be really tight and precise and make it look really perfect, but I just think it looks so much more fun if it's a bit more slapdash. (laughs) But again, personal preference. So for the bigger part of the hedge there, I'm coming in with a very dark version of my green, lots of pigment, not too much water. Again, trying to vary the tone though, and I think I'm adding in bits of indigo just to make it darker in some places, and do you see how 
it kind of almost looks it's got some depth to it because it's got those different colors in it it's got darker and lighter kind of describes the form a bit not a bit more nicely that will come with practice just keep trying it took me a little while but yeah it'll just come with practice and it's just so much more rewarding than painting your everything a flat color so this this color on the front of the building is a bit too drab for my liking and I think I'll come back in a minute and sort that out but these are just the base layers I'm just getting some colors down and you can always add on top afterwards so now I'm coming in with my Rosemary & Co Travel Dagger Brush, one of my favourite brushes, especially for smaller areas because it's got a nice point on it. So I'll leave the link to this brush below as well if you're interested. It's not really too expensive in the grand scheme of things, but Rosemary & Co brushes are really nice. They're handmade brushes in the UK and they're, they're, they're really lovely brushes. And also it's great because it's a travel brush, so you can put the... The brush ends you can flip it over and put it inside the handle and it protects the brush so they're just awesome to travel with so as you can see i'm just going around and just adding some details in like the drain pipe there and um, now i'm adding in some sort of light gray for the windows and in areas i'm making it a bit darker i'm just trying to sort of look at the photo and see how the panes of glass you know the different tones in the panes of glass because I think sometimes that can really look cool if you can try and get some reflections or some gradation in the glass of the windows sometimes though I just do windows dead black and I draw white frames over them it just depends on what my reference photo is and that kind of thing and what kind of vibe I'm going for so here I'm coming in with my black brush pen it's one of my favorite steps in the sketching process and again it's personal preference if you want to do this it's quite a graphic look putting in black dead black with a uh, brush pen but I really enjoy it I don't use it in every sketch but it's it is a stage that I consider in every sketch like do I need some real blacks in this sketch because one way to add contrast in your sketch is to really add like strong darks and strong lights and in watercolour, we add strong lights by just actually not painting anything in that area. But we can add we can add dark blacks with the brush pen. And here, I feel like there's not enough depth going on, so I've added in some shadow areas. But again, I just feel like the building's looking a bit drab, so I think I do come back over it and just make it a bit redder, a bit oranger. But we'll see that in a minute. And you see how I'm switching back and forward between things. So I've used the black brush pen, but now I've gone back to the watercolour and I'm switching between brushes as well, depending on what area I'm painting. When I'm painting these bushes, for example, I want a big brush because it's a lot of surface area. If I'm just trying to get a bit of a shadow underneath things, then I'm using my smaller brush. And now I'm just coming in with a thicker fine liner because I just want to add some thicker lines to my sketch just to bring some areas further forward. It's one of the most effective things you can do and I recommend doing it towards the end of your sketches, adding in thicker lines. For example, that section of the house where the door, the front door is, thicker lines around that because it does stand further forward than the rest of the building. Also thicker lines under the roof because there's shadow areas there, that works well. And a thicker line on the roof section of where the front door is as well because again that's standing further forward than the rest of the house. And just any areas where you just don't think it's defined enough, it just needs a stronger line. Just kind of look at your sketch and be like, mm, what's not working here? What's, what's not standing forward enough? And then that's where you should add a thicker line. And now I'm going in with another of my favourite tools, which is a white gel pen. Again, I try and do this uh, at the end of the sketch, just to add in some final details, like those panels on the door might not necessarily be what you're seeing in the photograph but you kind of have to use your imagination as to where some white would look good for example some grass blades at the bottom of that bush because they're against a dark background it actually works quite nicely and now I'm just adding a bit of splatter because I always just like a bit of subtle splatter can sometimes make things look more exciting Okay, so I didn't come back in with a stronger red or orange but I think if I did do this sketch again I might be tempted just to try and make that front facade of the building just a little brighter um, but I do like how the front part where the front door is is brighter and standing forward and the other parts of the house are a bit drabber and they're standing further back. So that is my sketch for this house portrait. Do you see how I just kept it nice and simple 
and we work through the stages, pencil sketch, inking, watercolour layers, the first layer, and then adding on with the second layer, a bit of black with a brush pen, a few details with a white gel pen, and there we go. And you can just keep practising these guys. There's infinite amounts of photos on Pinterest of interesting looking houses. And yeah, just make it a project. And I can promise you, your sketching skills will improve really, really nicely. And also don't forget the idea of making yourself a little side hustle or just being able to do this for people as gifts. It's just a really lovely idea. So I hope you enjoyed that nice, easy tutorial. I hope you also have a go at this. If you do, feel free to tag me on Instagram. Um, you can either tag Urban Sketching World or you can tag Taria's Sketchy Adventures. I use them both interchangeably. It's probably not the slickest social media <laughs> strategy, but uh, yeah, you can use both interchangeably. Don't forget to also check out my book of my Sketchy Adventures Around the World for three years between 2017 and 2020. And I will see you in the next video.